Hello YouTube and welcome to this edition of Race Car Fabrication and Restoration. My name is Ronnie Humphrey and I greatly appreciate you joining us today as we continue to work on this 1988 Winston Cup Buick Regal. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't done so already. That way you will know whenever we release videos. Uh, we do a minimum of one per week, but lately we've been doing two and three per week. So I greatly appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button and follow us along and I'm, I'm very appreciative for those of you who have already subscribed to the channel. As you saw in our last episode, we was able to get the body off the chassis. What a job that was. Man, what a job it was. If you missed it, go back and look at that. But we got her off, and uh, we're going to focus today on this chassis behind me. When you get it ready to take it to the powder coater and get it sandblasted, and they can powder coat it. Uh, but we have some little welds uh, we need to do to the chassis. We want to do as much stuff as we can replace the floor pans obviously uh we want to get all that you know done as far as welding because we don't want to be welding on the chassis when it comes back on the powder coat we're gonna have to do some but we won't keep that to a minimum but hey thanks again for watching and joining us today hang with me let's see what we can get done well before we get started on the chassis back there this morning i want to show you how we ended up getting the body uh, situated on some rollers. I had these chassis dollies already and I just uh, took some extra tubing I had and I'm real proud of it how it turned out but this way the, the chassis could be rolled around very very easy. Uh, this nose was end up being a lot heavier than what I thought. I thought it would support off the fenders enough but it wouldn't so I put this uh, stinger out here but then the first thing I did when I let it down the uh, dolly flipped that way. So I came up with a little roller and welded it on there uh, on the stinger. And of course that comes through and sticks through the, the vent hole down there. So that worked out uh, pretty good. Uh, this thing is it's kind of wild looking, kind of a Frankenstein deal, but it works good. I got some tabs here on the end to keep it from coming off the edge. But uh, you can roll around no problem. So that uh, makes it easy for us and I can go in and out as uh, I kind of decided we're gonna put a, uh, or rent rather, a little small air compressor from a rental company because I don't want to wear mine out, but I'm gonna get a sandblaster. We're gonna gingerly attempt to sandblast this body, a lot of it. And uh, I think just that's gonna be the thing to do, get all the numbers and decals off of it. So we gotta get that done. I'm gonna have a lot of repair, but at least I want to show you my dollies I built. I, I thought and thought, and I'm very, very proud how they turned out after coming up with the idea. Okay, on the ch chassis, uh, we got to cut all of this square tubing off on the bottom. We're gonna go back with traditional tabs like we used to do on our late models. Uh, all they're gonna do, we're gonna weld a tab to the frame and then bolt all of our uh, supports on. I don't have anything welded, so we're gonna update all of that. Uh, also decided, if you remember on the previous episodes, they were welding this directly to the body. They have a plate uh, welded to the body. I'm gonna put a plate here so we can bolt it. That way, when we get the chassis back from the power coder, I won't have to be uh, welding on this. So we'll put a tab on both sides and then we'll bolt just, we're gonna use a 3 8 bolt and that'll be enough on each side to support the nose because the nose just actually sits on these tabs. Uh, I've got to do a lot of repair here. And of course we've got the floor pans. I did pick up the metal yesterday for that, but uh, got to put this roof support back on. So we've got a lot of stuff to do. It's real small, not gonna be very exciting, unfortunately, but we're gonna get going here on it. So hang in there.
Okay, we got the rocker panels cut off on both sides. Got these um, body braces back here for the rear quarter panel. I'm gonna go ahead and reattach this roof piece up here now, get that welded in. And uh, that rust is just a mess, but we'll come back in the grinder and get all that real clean. But Buddy uh, got here now, so I'm not sure. What you gonna work on first, Buddy? Just on some I'm gonna drill them other aluminum panels off right there. Okay. Okay, so get that done, be right back with you. Okay, we got the body welded back on and those are back in place where they were originally. Uh, that supports the roof. Now I'm working on this battery box. This thing is just totally rotten. I've got it broke loose here from the wheel well. We're gonna cut this whole thing out. We're just build a whole brand new body uh, battery box and get it welded up with brand new metal. So I'm gonna have to cut this thing out so we'll keep working on it here. show you something here is pretty cool I made this drill bit about 10 years ago and buddy's using it it, it ain't just flushest thing this is welded to a piece of tubing and I need a longer and a spacer I need some of my house I was trying to drill something up in the ceiling but uh we're trying to drill out this uh wood <laughs> spacer they use when you, to take place where the lead is or where the lead is not but it's so old and so rotten we're trying to drill it out We've been trying to get this thing out for two days. We got a piece of solid of aluminum here. Which well, it's swelled up. Yeah, you know, it's swelled up. So I don't see no daylight in there yet. But anyway, our theory is to try to drill this out. And uh, that's a mess. I got the uh, battery box off. That is really fine, fine piece right there. 
The ball works just fine in so much rust, more and more rust. This will go in here, build new box, set it back in. We're thinking we're definitely going to have to rent a, a sandblaster and try to sandblast a lot of stuff myself. So anyway, hopefully we get this piece out and we'll be here with you in a second. Okay, if you want to see what 30 years of wood looks like, we can actually see, I'll come on this end with him holding the light down there. You can actually see through there now, but there's still split wood splinters in there. But man, it looks like a cross between wood and cow manure. But we need to get that where we can air out and dry. But at least we can stick our piece of aluminum all the way through there now. Welcome back. I greatly appreciate you guys watching this episode of Race Car Fabrication and Restoration. It's kind of slow today, but I want to make sure that I document everything that goes into this car and just how much work it is. Uh, it's very tedious and it's got to have a lot of small items done. And you can kind of see that today with just the small items we got done, but it was an all day project. Uh, the next big item of business to do is going to build a new battery box and we'll do that on the next episode then we're trying to figure out how to get the car sandblasted so we can find all the weak places inside of the interior and on the floor pan so those can be uh corrected and replaced before we go get the real sandblasting before the powder coating so appreciate you guys watching as always please subscribe to the channel if you hadn't done so already and we'll see you next time on race car fabrication and restoration take care